Good morning to all of you. I'm uh, Alberto Campagnolo from University of Padova. I uh, will now present the work entitled Crack Propagation Simulations in uh, Steel Welded Joints for Off Road Vehicles. Uh, the co authors of this work is, uh, 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 sorry, are Venanzio Giannella, uh, Roberto Citarella from the uh, University of Salerno, and Giovanni Menighetti from the University of Padova. Uh, this work has been performed in the context of a wider uh, project uh, focused on the uh, structural reliability of uh, uh, rear axles for off-road vehicles uh, designed and manufactured by Carnaro. More in detail, the rear axles of uh, these vehicles uh, are characterized by lots of uh, fillet weldments having uh, complex intermittent uh, geometries and uh, being subjected to a multi axial stress state. Uh, the wall door of this well, uh, uh, and also the wall door can be considered as a sharp V notch since uh, the radius of this location is extremely reduced. So, uh, the static assessment of uh, such geometrical uh, uh, configuration uh, can be performed by applying local static approaches, such as the peak stress method, which is based on the a singular linear elastic peak stretches calculated directly at the Vinoch sheet. Before applying uh, uh, this local approach to the uh, actual rear axle of an off road vehicle, a preliminary activity has been performed, which consisted in uh, analyzing the fatigue behavior of laboratory specimens, reproducing uh, the um, actual um, geometry of the weldments, the intermediate weldments, and uh, a similar uh, local stress state. So, at the University of Padua, we are performing the experimental fatigue test and also the application of the peak stress method uh, fatigue approach, while at the University of Salerno, um, especially Venanzio, uh, performed the crack propagation simulation. First of all, a brief introduction on the uh, peak stress method, which is a, a local fatigue approach, essentially based on the calculation uh, of the peak stresses at the V notch. Uh, sorry, at the uh, well toe or the well root side. More in detail, the opening peak stress is calculated for mode one, the in-plane shear stress is uh, calculated for uh, mode two, and the out-of-plane shear stresses are calculated in green for mode three loading. Uh, these peak stresses are calculated from a uh, linear elastic uh, uh, finite element model uh, discretized by a coarse uh, free mesh pattern having size D. After having calculated the peak stresses, they are uh, processed inside this expression, which allows to calculate the, the fatigue damage parameter, which is the equivalent peak stress, which is based essentially on the average three energy density approach. Then we can introduce the local deaccelerate ratio, which is given by the ratio between the energy contribution due to shear loadings, which are mode two and mode three, and the energy contributions tied to opening mode, which is mode one. After having calculated this local deacceleration ratio lambda, we can observe that the experimental results available today, uh, having uh, lambda equal to zero, fall inside the scatter band, uh, having a path class of 156 megapascal, and slope k equal to three, in agreement with standards and recommendations. On the other hand, uh, results having lambda greater than zero, fall inside the scatter band, having a path class of 257 megapascal, and slope k equal to 5, which is in agreement with standards and recommendation when concerning uh, shear loading. So after this uh, brief theoretical background, uh, concerning the welded details, they are um, they consisted of a pipe penetrating the plate by means of uh, four intermittent uh, fillet weldments uh, <coughs> due to a radial backlash uh, between uh, the tube and the plate, uh, two different uh, wild root lines uh, were generated by each weldment. Uh, two different uh, geometrical configurations have been fully tested. One uh, with the weldments orthogonal to the loading direction, which is the transfer geometry, while another one which has the weldments uh, parallel to the loading direction, which is the longitudinal geometry. Uh, the table reports the details of the materials of the tube, which is essentially a functional temperance steel, and the, the material of the plate, which is a structural steel. Both uh, as well as the stress relief uh, joints have been uh, fatigue tested uh, by employing uh, an actual hydraulic testing machine with a load capacity of uh, 250 kN. The tests have been performed at a load ratio R equal to uh, 0.05, uh, 
and uh, a technical cracking initiation criteria has been defined uh, to stop the test when the maximum uh, uh, displacement of the actuator shows, uh, shows an increment of 0.1 millimeters. This translates into uh, stiffness drops of around 10%. So, going to the results, we observed that uh, uh, transverse joints exhibited mainly crack initiation from uh, the two side well toe, but also um, uh, secondary cracks initiated at the uh, two side well root. And uh, uh, later, they propagated through the tube. Concerning longitudinal joints, is that uh, the uh, crack always initiated from the plate side uh, well toe and then the crack propagated through the plate. We can see that the uh, technical crack initiation criterion leads to uh, cracks propagated for several tens of millimeters. So it's not exactly a crack initiation line. Um, then we uh, summarize the experimental results in terms of the number of cycle to crack initiation technical crack initiation as a function of the uh, applied load range uh, for transverse on the left and longitudinal on the right uh, joints. We can observe that for the transverse joints, the um, stress relieved uh, treatment, uh, which are the data in the red color, exhibited a beneficial effect in the hype cycle regime, while for longitudinal joints, there is no difference between the swell and stress relief data. Uh, another point which uh, the circle we mentioned is the slope of the uh, data, which for transverse joints is between four and six, which is uh, pretty higher than uh, the value of three, which is suggested for action loading, while uh, longitudinal joints has a slope of 3.4, which is in good agreement with the uh, uh, suggestion of standards uh, uh, for action loading. We, uh, we will discuss in more detail this topic in later on. So after having uh, derived the nominal experimental results, we have converted them in terms of equivalent peak stress by applying the peak stress method. First of all, we have uh, simplified the uh, geometry of the well dance by introducing a medialized well dance geometry, essentially by a revolution of the transverse triangular section around the radial axis reported in this figure. After that, we have defined three-dimensional FE model in ANSYS environment by exploiting uh, uh, triple symmetry. We have applied uh, uh, loading and constraint condition to simulate the experimental test. We have uh, defined a free uh, mesh pattern of uh, 10 node triangular elements uh, with a size equal to 0.4 millimeters to comply with the peak stress method requirements. After having solved the model, we have calculated uh, the peak stresses, essentially the mode one, mode two, and mode three peak stresses along the, all the well toe lines and well root lines. After that, we have uh, processed the uh, peak stresses inside this expression to compute the equivalent peak stress, which has been reported in this graph for transverse joints, the equivalent peak stress. Uh, distribution along all the uh, critical, uh, potential critical location. We can observe that the maximum value of the equivalent peak stress, which is a critical value, uh, occurred at the two side well toe, which is in perfect agreement with the experimental observation. Concerning longitudinal joints, uh, uh, also in this case, the distribution of the equivalent stress uh, has been uh, reported along the root and toe lines, and the maximum value in this case occurred at the plate side well toe, which is again in agreement with experimental observation. So, peak stress method is able to properly estimate the crack initiation location. Concerning the fatigue life, uh, adding in hand the equivalent peak stress at the critical location, we have converted the previous results and reported in this graph in terms of a number of cycle to crack initiation as a function of the equivalent peak stress length. Uh, the results have been compared with the proper fatigue design curve according to the peak stress method. We have to observe that the lambda, which is the local peak size ratio, lambda value was essentially practically zero for both cases. So the uh, fatigue design curve is uh, that with a fat class of 156 megapascal and slope k equal to three in both cases. Concerning transverse joints, we can observe that the peak stress method of these estimations are extremely on the safe side with respect to the uh, experimental results. 
the reason for this phenomenon could be the, uh, an extremely long cracker pro propagation phase. We will discuss later on. Uh, concerning longitudinal joints, is that the Dixon's method based estimation are in fairly good agreement with experimental plot. So let's focus now on transfer joints to discuss the uh, extremely long propagation phase. If we consider uh, the transverse joints and the uh, actual load applied to the plate, this is uh, carried out by uh, two parallel load paths. One is uh, the green one, which passes through the wall pit and the tube, while the second one is the loading path passing through the plate net section. So if we look at the crack initiation region, uh, which is the plate, uh, tube side uh, wall door, well, the crack initiate and propagate through the uh, tube of thickness, the stiffness of the tube reduces. So, also the load carried out by, um, sorry, the load sustained by the tube is reducing. So, if we look at the ex general expression of the crack driving force, uh, we can see that during crack propagation, the term A is obviously increasing, while the uh, stress range, delta sigma, um, across uh, the crack faces is reducing due to a stiffness drop of the tube. So we don't know exactly what will be the trend of delta K1 during crack propagation, but essentially it will be not uh, uh, monotonically increasing due to a uh, compensation of that. So to uh, investigate in more detail this phenomenon, we have performed a new experimental test by taking a transfer joint, but by cutting the uh, plate net section in order to remove uh, the loading path, uh, the red loading path through the plate section. The test has been performed uh, uh, with the same testing condition at a load range of 22 kN. The first physical fatigue cracks have been observed at around uh, 130,000 cycles, while the complete separation occurred at uh, around 400,000 cycles. If we convert uh, this experimental datum with uh, the new geometry in terms of the peak stress method, we can observe that the new datum in a uh, uh, pink uh, color is uh, reported in the same figure as previous slide, but uh, in this case, the peak stress method estimation is uh, um, extremely close to the uh, experimental fatigue life uh, when the uh, first visible fatigue tracks have been observed. So the pixels method uh, estimation are in good agreement with this new data. So if we remove the long track propagation phase and we, uh, uh, with the new geometry, we will be able to uh, get uh, uh, better results also in terms of fatigue life. So going to the numerical simulation, University of uh, Salerno and especially Menanzo helped us to investigate in more detail this phenomenon by performing uh, three times simulation coupling abacus with Frank 3D. First of all, we have slightly uh, modified the geometry to the wall door, uh, introducing a radius of one millimeter in agreement with the actual geometry of the wall uh, in order to simplify the introduction of the initial track. After that, uh, a three-dimensional model uh, discretized by 10 nodes, uh, the thread element has been generated in Abacus, uh, replicating the experimental testing condition in terms of loading constraints. A pre crack adding depth of 0.1 millimeter and semicircular shape has been introduced in the experimental track initiation location. The analysis has been performed by assuming a linear elastic material behavior and uh, in implementing the parameters of a Paris curve taken from the literature and relevant to a structural steel tested that are equal to 0.05. The procedure has been uh, uh, as follows. First of all, Abacus solved the FE model. After that, Frankfurt D uh, calculates the K values along the crack front and it predicts the crack propagation direction by MTS approach. Um, once uh, defined the average crack extension in the range between 0.01 and 1 millimeters, Frankfurt D defined the new uh, crack front. It uh, inserts uh, the uh, extended crack in the model and it matches the model. This uh, procedure has been applied alternatively up to the end of the propagation, uh, sorry, track propagation simulation. And so uh, going to the details, we have applied the procedure to a longitudinal joint, applying a maximum load of 45 kN. The uh, first remeshing of the volume has been performed locally to insert the initial crack having a semicircular shape and that 0.1 millimeter. 
Secondary matching has been uh, uh, required when the crack reaches the boundary of the uh, first volume, as uh, reported in the right figure. So, going to the results, we can see that the first crack, the initial crack, started from the uh, plate side well two. After some increments, it propagates through the plate, reaching the uh, external boundary of the plate. So, if we consider a transfer section, and we see the front view, we can see in this video the initial crack, which is a semicircular with a depth of 0.1 millimeters. It propagates with a semi elliptical crack from shape, becoming uh, essentially a full thickness crack, propagating uh, up to the external boundary of the plate. So the results are in agreement with the experimental ones, so both in terms of crack from shape and also crack direction, crack propagation direction. The same procedure has been applied also for transverse joints, both in the original configuration and the modified one with plate uh, net section cut. Again, we have uh, defined a, a remeshing volume to uh, insert locally the uh, initial crack and also second remeshing when the crack reaches the boundary of the volume. And the zoom here uh, is uh, uh, reported to show that uh, the plate net section is cut. It's, uh, I think Going to the results of in this case, we have reported only the last increment. We can see that the crack propagated from the two sidewall toe uh, through the thickness. The video shows again the initial crack from the two sidewall toe propagating with a semi elliptical crack from shape up to uh, separating the, uh, the two. Also, in this case, the uh, numerical simulation and the experimental results are in one degree in terms of crack front shape and crack propagation direction. Summarizing, we can calculate now the uh, K1 stress intensity factor along the path defined in these uh, figures and reporting the values uh, in this graph as a function of the crack length. We can see that for the original transverse geometry uh, in uh, black color, the K1 uh, value shows a nearly constant uh, uh, trend during crack propagation. So this is in agreement with the qualitative uh, observation performed before, looking at the crack rate force, where we observed that the crack is increasing, but the stress range is decreasing. So these two uh, behavior compensate the values of K1, which are almost constant and produces a long crack propagation phase. On the other hand, the longitudinal and the modified transverse geometry show both a monotonically increasing uh, K1 value, which is typical for, for the crack propagation problem. So uh, the propagation phase is uh, uh, reduced in such cases. So to conclude this work, uh, we have performed uh, experimental static tests on transverse and longitudinal weather joints uh, under action loading. The pixels method allows to uh, detect the, properly the crack initiation location, but uh, the static light of transfer joint was uh, extremely on the safe side. The crack propagation phase uh, has been started by uh, ST analysis, producing a pre crack of 0.1 millimeters. Uh, the results showed that K1 is almost constant for uh, transfer geometry and uh, an increasing function of the crack depth for longitudinal ones. So, explain the uh, experimental results. Uh, future developments uh, uh, include the experimental derivation of the pilot scores for both materials of the tube and the plate. We are extracting uh, some SMD or CT specimens from the real well, the joints. Moreover, we are planning to perform uh, additional experimental static tests on the well the joints by monitoring crack initiation and propagation phases by direct current protection of techniques and the crack detectors. With this, I conclude. Thank you for your attention.